hi America, um, these are my friends. We just watched the debate and uh, very, very important message for you. Um, I just want to say, dear America, you're not that stupid. You're not. We have a lot of faith in you, in this country, to make wise decisions. Because we think it's already great. We have to be able to do better than this. And Michael's other, emotional right now. He's emotional. Emotional. <laughs> he's emotional. And, and, uh, and I just got to say, after watching that, for anyone with intelligence who understands that we need more than someone just saying things are bad, things are real bad, things are bad. And also someone who lies through an entire debate. Like, you don't get to win a debate when you tell a bunch of lies, but you just interrupt people a whole lot. It doesn't work like that. And fear-mongering. It's all fear-mongering. It's, it's, the, the country is doing better than it has in a decade. We actually have had record job improvements, 15 million new jobs, so cool. I'm very obsessed. <laughs> I'm just like very I, I just wanna say what simply needs to be said, which is, we're not that stupid. Mm -hmm. I know people are upset, but we're not dumb. And you know what? Think about this, because I, I like coming at it from a point of view of who would the best role model be? Mm. And we have one candidate who, yes, is a career politician. I like that idea. Would you put a high school football player on the field with NFL players that weigh 300 pounds? No, they now, would die. Would you put an so, advertising executive in the room in the hospital to be your heart surgeon because they just decided they wanted to do something new and who needs to be an expert and, in complicated and, shit? And who's respected in the international community? Oh. Uh, this, this guy, there, there are, go, go look it up. There's dozens of quotes about leaders saying that they don't want to deal with this person. And you know who I'm talking about. Also one more thing, I locker room you. talk. <laughs> I played sports my whole life growing up, so did these guys. Oh yeah, dudes, you weigh in on this. Oh, sure. Uh, that isn't here. locker room here, talk. Wait, is anybody me, who talks? Okay, okay, okay we're gonna here. squeeze in. Give me the phone. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it for you here. Talk to me this about is, locker rooms. Okay, this is, this is very important. We all, all three of us played sports growing up. Anybody who talks like that about women in a locker room would be ostracized. It's shunned. It, it's a shunned. punk. You'd be like, you're a punk. What are you talking about? And, and in all honesty, yeah. Guys say some pretty dumb and asinine things sometimes when they're talking about women, especially in locker rooms, especially around just dudes, but never to that degree. Locker room talk is, oh my God, that chick is hot. Oh my God, I want her so bad. Never, here's what I actually do. Making, making a, a, a statement about action, saying this is what I do, and, and being and, that vulgar, that kind of vulgarity, and I would look at and making, sexual like, assault. Like, making a statement about sexual assault is never acceptable. There's just no context in which this wouldn't get called out by other people. And what is interesting to me, hi, I'm here, is, is that, is that nobody's, okay, nobody's talking about the fact that not only is this man bragging about the ways in which he sexually assaults women, he's telling his audience, he's telling kids in America, he's telling girls they should take it and boys they should do it because he's entitled to, because he's rich and famous. No, bro, you are not entitled to touch my body or any woman's body. And the fact that they got off that bus and orchestrated a little like, hey, don't you wanna give the Donald a hug? So that this woman would have to like, press her chest up against this guy so he could grope her? Fuck these people. Whoa. Sorry. So Sorry, cool. internet. Okay. Back to what I wanted to say. I, at the whole Scott's time like, watching. Stop swearing on no, it's fine. Stuff. It's fine. Uh, the the whole time we watched the debate here in Chicago, um, I just kept looking at my friends. My friends kept looking at me, and we kept saying to ourselves, "We can do better than this." And I actually felt bad for Hillary tonight, and I commend her for keeping it together. Yeah. Because it's hard for someone with intelligence to sit there and have to hear lie after lie after mm -hmm. lie and put up with it and insult after insult after insult and put up with it and she did it with class. And Donald, I know it's hard for you. I know your entire life you've never had to sit in front of an intelligent woman and have them actually push back with an opinion. Well, I'm sorry, tonight you had to deal with that just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that woman is going to be the president of the United States because mm -hmm. we aren't stupid. And for all my Republican friends who are frustrated, who want change, who when I speak to you, you say, I just can't vote for her. 
If you really, really want a great Republican, then do the right thing as an American first, help her win, and in four years come with a candidate that everyone in this room can at least respect. Yes. Because we don't respect this Absolutely. dude. He's not speaking for Americans because for the working man out there who thinks that he's speaking for you, I promise you he's been screwing over the working man a long, long time. And we have evidence of it in every deal he's ever done. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, you can go look at people that he's employed, uh, small business owners, that he's completely stiffed out of uh, full payment um, for, you know, services rendered. Well, not to mention the fact that he convinced a bunch of people that a great way to make money in America would be real estate. And he took their money for his casino. Casinos don't lose, guys. Casinos, the big phrase is the house always wins. That's for a reason. He stole money from people who if they'd invested in MGM stock, that stock would now be worth $600. He, he took their money at 140 and the stock is now worth like five bucks. And you know what he did with that money? He gave himself a $44 million bonus. He spent $6 million on fuel for his private jet. And he spent $1.8 million on Trump iced mm. bottled water. Mm. Have you ever heard of it? No, because it's another company that he tanked. And he tanked it with money from people like our parents. And that is not okay. This and, guy's not out to protect anybody but himself. And, and li li leaving aside... Um, the, the policy stuff for a second and the taxes which he hasn't paid and hasn't contributed as a citizen and all, all that crap and the misogyny and the, the negative comments and all that stuff, leaving that aside, it's the fear mongering that I can't stand. It's, the, it's, it's us against them. That's the mentality that he's creating in this country and that scar is gonna stay even after he's gone and that's not okay with me because it's not us against them, it's us. It's America, we are together, we are in it together, and that's how it will end. And that's that. There is not one Fortune 100 CEO who's endorsed this man. There is not one mm. great businessman who has endorsed him. If you actually took his inheritance and you put it, president. not one living president, Republican or Democrat, who's endorsed this man. Mm. If you took his inheritance and you put it in the S&P and you just let it sit there, he'd be, more, he'd be richer today than he is right now. He is not a good businessman. He is someone who just likes to talk out both sides of his mouth and say whatever it takes. And here's the thing, I actually don't believe he's going to win. I think this is over because I believe in everyone out there and I think we're smart this. I think the media wants to keep it close because they'd like 100 million people mm -hmm. to watch the next debate because they're all gonna make a lot of money. But we are better than this, we stand together. I take pride, I've said it to you guys before, my grandparents came to this country. I'm the, my father was a refugee. I'm the first one, my last name, born here. And I take a lot of pride in that because this is a country that they fought so hard to bring me to because it's a beautiful, great, great place. And if you go out to anywhere else in the world and you ask them where they want to go, the majority of people would say if, they, if they're living in injustice, they want to come to the United States. And he does not understand that. He wants to separate us. And tonight, when that wonderful Muslim American woman asked that question. Mm. He could not give a real answer because he poured fuel on the fire. He tries to divide us and he won't admit to it. He said that racist, racist lie about the president in the United States. If anyone else did that, they'd be calling out and saying treason, treason, and you're a traitor and everything else. He should also be tried for treason for calling on Russia to hack the United States. Why does Putin want this man to get elected so bad? He literally committed an act of treason on television. He is insane. Insane. Get in there, buddy. Also, oh. yeah, you want, I got you. And, and also, <laughs> just, just make the right decision because Frankie <laughs> says so. Look at her. <laughs> Add something. Come on, buddy. Go in. Look, at the end of the day, the, w what Jesse just said about the fear mongering is the fear mongering is the most dangerous part of this, right? Undermining the idea of the, our, the way democracy works in this country, undermining and lying to people about expectations for things that are impossible makes it harder for our citizens to work together. And after this election is over, when Secretary Clinton is President of the United States, there's gonna be a moment where we need to reconcile. Mm. And the fear and the anger and the insults and the lies are gonna make it more difficult for us to function as a society. Mm. But we need, we need a second party, we need some balance, we need some ability to work together. And none of those things are coming from the right at this moment, right? And we need those things back, right? We need, we need another four years, right, where we have some real leadership again. And, and he's making it nearly impossible. And our final thoughts, anyone? Um, 
Yeah, I, I think that we gotta also keep in mind that, what's that? The, yeah, locker room talk ended when we were 14. That, yes. And, and, and also, like, let's keep in mind that we're in this together. It's, you know, e if your views are uh, super right or super left or moderate, it doesn't matter. We're all Americans, and we're in it together, and that's how it's going to be after this election. And, and be nice to your neighbor. Give somebody a hug. See it, see it from the other point of view. Um, try to be open. Uh, read you know, different publications. Read, read ones that are left, read ones that are uh, in the middle, read ones that are right, um, and stay informed, um, and, and love each other. That's it. You wanna say anything to the end? I agree, you know, we're, we're smarter than letting a guy who's looking to improve his life divide us as a country, you know? We're, we're smart people. We, <laughs> he asked tonight, he said, how stupid is America? We're not stupid, sir. We are, we are a nation of intelligent human beings that is built on unity, that is built on welcoming people, that is a nation for all. And this election, we get to choose, you know? Do, do we want to elect a man who's modeling his campaign run on Hitler in the 1920s, who praises Putin and Mussolini? Or do we want to elect someone who says, hey, I believe America is great and can only be better if we're better to more people, if we make sure students are not facing crippling debt, if we make sure that the middle class can bolster itself and be stronger, if we make sure that we improve minimum wage so that the people out there who are struggling the most have better. That's America where everybody gets a fair shake. So let's prove to him that we're not stupid at all. Bottom line is whether you're Democrat or Republican, you're an American first and make the right decision for America and realize that it's, it's in our toughest times where we've shown our greatest strength. And right now it's a tough time in America. We're seeing an election like we've never seen before. But this is where we show who we really are and I believe that we'll do that on November 8th and we will not send a message to the world that when things get tough, we let fear dictate our decisions. Boom shakalaka. So, yeah. So uh, I'll see everybody soon. These are my friends watching in Chicago. We've been extremely frustrated tonight. We are no longer going to listen to what the media is saying about it being close because we know it isn't close because we know that you're going to make the right decision. And then we need to get to the real work, which is healing this great divide that we have. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, together we stand. Bye, everybody.